Hello and welcome to another episode of Invad Entry. My name is James Taylor and we're, we're going to talk about something nifty that I think it's nifty to do with breadcrumbs. So uh, context here is I'm redesigning the Ham Achievements website. Uh, there is a technical redesign as well as a cosmetic redesign at the same time. And what's going to happen here is in the old version, the data model was quite good, but the URLs were very bizarre. They didn't, they weren't what you would call maybe restful in that they sort of danced around a bit. So a good website has quite good URL design. It's predictable. So you can, if you know the URL, you could change it. So in this, for example, I've got a U following Reddit's practice for you for user. I've got a call sign in there. And then inside that, I'm looking at logs. It means if I chop the end of the URL, I'm going to another page looking at the logs. Often on a website as well, you have the what's called breadcrumbs at the top, which sort of work out where you are. And I wanted a way of generically working out all the breadcrumbs for where you are based upon the path you're on, um, but not just with a big lookup table. Uh, and although there is a lookup table involved because you do have to look it up. I wanted it to be flexible and dynamic. So if I changed a page or changed what one of these pages are doing, it would update all of the elements across all the views which were child views of that view um, and the way it works and I think this is kind of funky and I went down the wrong path a couple of times it but first of all the template the template's very easy I throw at every single page a variable called breadcrumbs breadcrumbs is a uh, array and basically what I want to make sure happens is the if not first basically says they don't want one of those little chevrons on the left if I didn't have that if for loop because this is Django template you can access this magic variable called uh, for loop which has like first last you know from the first iteration or last iteration or the counter if you want to do counting and then um, I've got this uh, for crumb and breadcrumb I've got like each one is a little dictionary so I've got a URL and a slug for then so I actually get when I actually look at these URLs uh, the URL here is, is like slash whatever but you notice here I've actually got more parts of my path that actually have the URL. This slash u isn't, doesn't resolve. It's not a valid path going slash u doesn't do anything. It'll be a 404 effectively. So I don't want that appearing in the call sign. The way that I did this, first of all, was I made a thing called a ham view. This is, this is going to be the basis of my new system. The ham view is a, is a generic class which all my views are going to uh, implement. So they've all got a template and they've all got a breadcrumb and they all have a thing called get context and get context is where you're going to do the work. So it's going to be, oh, this is where I work out the context for the page I'm currently on. So I load up my current stats for the user or whatever it is. Um, and I've generated this thing called breadcrumb calculator. And then the get method, you basically get and post, but you'll basically leave alone. There'll be, there'll be extra inheritances coming along for posts. Um, but on the ham view, it's a ham view and it's got this thing called breadcrumb which you override. So when you're making a view, such as the call sign view, you say, I want to use the call sign template and I want the breadcrumb name to be call sign, which means that every time it comes here, that's for those call sign. Uh, and then the context here has just been stubbed out. I haven't done the database queries to work out the content and it's always going to be the title of the page with that. We'll come back to some of those fun stuff in a, uh, when we're further down the line of rewriting it. And what I like about Django is, is it has a whole bunch of inbuilt features. So what it actually does here is, is kind of fun. And I, 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 it's kind of quirky. It's one of those bits of Python where you kind of go, oh, I, I wasn't aware it would let me do that. Or, or people sometimes don't realize you can do like, it's, it's on the borderline of reflection. And so in the hand view, what it does is it looks, it splits the path up. So it, first of all, if the path was uh, slash this, it's going to, first of all, it's going to look at the slash, the slash and say the slash resolve and slash does and the slash u resolve and so on. So what it does, it chops the path and for every time each pit, it adds it back on and runs this program again called breadcrumb in it. Uh, it's printing off debug at the moment, it's fine. And it's using this called resolve. Now, this is a Django inbuilt, which basically looks at the URLs and runs your code against it. A lot of people use reverse to generate URLs correctly. So if you know there's a particular form or a particular page and you have you know the parameters to it it will generate you the url correctly so if you change the urls your generated url will always be correct this is kind of the backwards of that so it's given this url which view does it go to and it actually gives you back a resolved function now if it doesn't give you a resolved it gives you a resolve of 404 error which is a subclass of http 404 which you can then handle and in my case i'm going well 
there's no view on that URL. So this slash u, which I mentioned before, this slash u, which which would which will four four, um, it's it's fine. Um, and then what we're going to do then is is go through this and basically go okay, get me back this um, this object and the object. The resolved object I thought was going to give me the path object that you put into urls.py, but it doesn't. It actually gives you this target object, which has a whole bunch of um, uh, this resolved object, which has a whole bunch of variables about the function. It actually is a function pointer, as well as the path and the parameters and the quarks and the args and all the other variables all built into one. It's quite a complex object. But I'm interested in the function object. When you have a function pointer, uh, you can actually grab um, inside that function. It has a view class. So I can actually grab, this is not a normal function pointer, this is a, um, a, a special Django view pointer. So I can grab the view class that, that it's bound to. At that point, I actually have an instance of that class that has already generated the instances. So I can say, is that class a hand view? Is it one of these objects? And it's, if it is, I can then call this breadcrumb function and it means it resolves to give the correct function every time. I shove this into my global get, so I could generate a, a global context. So I generate context, the same on every single page, and then I actually generate the context for the individual page, merge the two contexts together, and throw it at the template. And that's basically what's happening here. That's, that's what's happening. So now if I come along here and say, actually the log page, the log, the generic log page, isn't called this one, goes, goes all logs. I'm gonna change what it is. When I'm on a sub page of that now, like looking at a specific log, it actually now, updates correctly the internal breadcrumb. And I think that's pretty cool. I think that means that I can now build really flexible URLs. I can add stuff in the middle of this. So if there was an extra URL in the middle of it, which didn't resolve, or it wasn't a hand view, it just would get dropped from the breadcrumbs and it wouldn't appear. So it's skipping the bits that doesn't matter. It looks good. It's really neat. Um, it doesn't have to just be this. It can be dropped into the, the more fancy templates of HTML, unordered lists and so on, CSS applied or everything else that you enjoy from it. Um, but that's it. That That is, I think, a really funky little um, way of doing common functionality. This is much better than what I was doing in the previous version. In the previous version, I actually had a, um, a tag, a custom tag that I dropped into every template, which ran a function to generate the breadcrumbs. And it was it was really messy. And it was also less performant than this. This is nice and performant, uh, especially in the resolve uh, um, function. The resolve function in Django is, is quite well optimized and because it's loaded up by the process thread, it's not like it's running through all the views every time. It, it's already pre-compiled all the regexes and everything. And that's it. Uh, it's a nice short video. Um, and if this is the kind of thing you're interested in, please hit like and hit subscribe below. And I'll see you all in the next episode.